Okay, so we're going to get started today. Um, welcome to uh, the second to last week. Such is life. Uh, so we essentially have three, three class meetings left before the final, before everything's due. So as I said, we kind of end up cramming a bunch of stuff in. Um, I'm going to teach this slightly differently than I did last semester, even though I had extra days. So this, the lecture that I'm going to do today, I actually cut out of last semester. But uh, in response to further difficulties with students and observing and getting advice back from students and, and whatever about it, I think this one's really important. And uh, I regretted taking it out last year, so you guys, or last semester. So you guys get this one, and you might miss <laughs> a different one. Um, but I think this is important, and this is, today it's all about sections. And you have this beautiful model, and how do you cut a section through it? I'm not going to go into line drawings today. We will do line drawings on Wednesday and line drawings on Monday. Uh, even though it won't be all the line drawings, we'll do elevations, and then I forget what the other one is that we're going to do. Um, the elevations that we're going to do on Wednesday is directly uh, at um, Anthony Grand's request at 220. So um, they're related. So hopefully those of you that haven't taken 220, I know there's a lot of you in it right now anyway. Uh, but if you're going to take 220 next semester, you should be prepped for the line drawings that he's going to want. So uh, that we will cover on Wednesday. Today we're going to work through sections. We're going to do sectional renderings, essentially. Uh, and I think sections are really important, especially in Rhino, because we have the ability to do sections differently than other modeling programs. Programs like SketchUp, when you cut a section, it's as if half your building is gone. And in Rhino, when we do it the way I'm going to show you how to do it today, we can preserve all of your building. We can have sunlight coming into your building as if the whole building is there. We just don't see part of the building. Uh, which is a really cool thing, uh, especially when it comes to light studies. Um, so I'm going to walk you through that today. A couple other things that have changed a little bit, um, I hope. And of course it's not. There we go. Um, I, I, uh, I did something different to the screen. And this is always in, in my evolution of trying to, to communicate things better to you. Um, I put a little halo around the mouse so that when you're looking at it on the projector, hopefully it's a little bit easier to see it. This would be something that I did in post-processing uh, on the videos. That you've, those of you that have watched the YouTube videos know that the little mouse has the halo on it. Uh, the other thing that I did differently is I have a, a gray bar up here at the bottom of the screen. I hope it doesn't take too much away from uh, what you guys are seeing. But when I type things, so if I went to, uh, I don't know, section, for example, what I type is going to show up there. Uh, and the hope is that everything that I type will show up there, not just the control keys. Uh, the only thing that I found that's a little weird is sometimes if I, if I press like control and a plus or something, it gives me some weird thing. But I'm working through that, OK? I'm trying my best. Um, so anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that up there. And I hope it doesn't disturb things too much. But I, I also hope that it's helpful uh, to you guys long term. So we'll see. It's an experiment today. We're going we're gonna to play around with it. OK, so when it comes to sections, uh, we're going to be working with, with two different things. Um, and one of the things that we're going to work with today is a plugin that is made by the Rhino people. Uh, it's called Section Tools, but it is not by default installed with Rhino. It's a separate plugin that you choose to install or not install. It is available for free. If you do a Google search for Section Tools, you can find it really easily from the developers of Rhino. It has already been installed on these machines. Um, we can access it up here in the Section Tools little drop down menu, which you'll see in Rhino, and I will do it. There are key commands for it as well, so I will show you what those are uh, as we go forward today as well. Uh, if for some reason you're not seeing Section Tools in your, in your menu structure up at the top, it means it wasn't installed correctly, and I can walk you through installing it. But it should be installed uh, for everybody without a problem. So, as I zoom out here, uh, we have my, my overall building. We have all my landscape. Uh, and ultimately, I'm going to need to cut a section through the building. As we start to get ready for cutting sections, the first thing is the process of cutting sections is destructive. It's going to destroy things in your model. We're going to explode blocks. We're going to delete things. We're going to adjust things. We're going to split things. Uh, so you want to make sure you do a save as before you actually start doing any sections. So it needs to be its own separate file. Uh, so I have not done that yet. That's how important it is. I'm going to do it in front of you to make sure that you see me do it. Uh, so I've taken my master site for, for this semester. I'm going to go to File, and then I'll go to Save As. 
And this is going to be the master site, but I'm going to add section next to it. And then save it. And that way, it's, it's blatantly obvious this is the one I'm going to destroy. And I don't mind destroying it. When I explode my blocks, that's all OK. So the next thing that I want to do is in my layer structure, I'm going to create a brand new layer called section. And I will create underneath the section layer a sublayer for uh, section plane. Or you could just say plane. And I'll make that the active layer. I'm going to make that the active layer. And now I'm going to create a uh, plane that cuts through my building where I want it to ultimately be cut through. Uh, so I'll come over here to my toolbar on the left side. And I'm going to choose the vertical plane option right here. And I'm going to draw a vertical plane that goes through everything, so to speak. Uh, I may start first at my building and work through it there. Uh, my building is a little bit complicated because it's on an angle. I don't have it on an orthogonal grid. So that's something that I'm going to have to do uh, long term. But if I wasn't worried about that, I could keep this on axis and get a section plane. I want to make sure that that section plane actually intersects my building. So let's move this back. And there it is, where it's cutting through part of my building. Let's move it back a little bit further. Yeah, maybe like that. And then I want to make this big enough so that it actually cuts through more than just my building. It cuts through all the ground and whatever. So I'm going to do a scale um, 1D. Oops. And I'm going to start, let me turn on my object snaps. And I'm going to start, let me turn on end and mid. I'll start at the middle. I'll go to the end. Doesn't matter which end I go to. There we go. And then I'm going to zoom way out. And I mean way out. And make my plane big enough to go through both sides of my terrain. Next thing I'll do is I'll zoom back in, I hope. And I'll do a scale 1D again, scale 1D. And this time, I'm going to go from the center. Come on. It's being very touchy on my mouse here. There we go. Center to the bottom. And I'll make sure that the plane is big enough to cut through everything in this direction as well, which I didn't do. Let's try that one more time. I'll zoom out. And since I'm doing the Tahoe scene, it's a little bit um, harder to keep zooming in and out because it's so much terrain. So there is that big plane that identifies um, the piece that I want to ultimately cut through the building. I'm going to do a second plane as well that is rotated so that I can cut through the building not on its diagonal. So it'll be on, on the axis of the building instead. Uh, but I'll show you both, and you can see both uh, in just a second. So I'm going to take this big surface that I just created. Uh, let me do a second sublayer. This is, again, not something that you need to do. I'll call this plane 2. And I'm going to look at this in the top view for a second. There it is. And I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to turn off ortho when I rotate it. Oops. Sorry. Again, midpoint. And there we go. And I'm going to rotate it. If I knew exactly what the angle was, it would be a little bit easier. Um, but it's about there, for example. And so now I have, uh, wait, did I make a copy of that first? Not sure I did. Copy, in place, you change object layer. Perfect. Uh, let me rotate this again. And 
and I'm actually going to use my building as a snap and then I can move this so that it goes through my building. Now in this case, the best place to cut through because I'm cutting parallel to my building here is through the stairwell. That's the part that I'm going to want to see cut through. Uh, so I'll have, the I'll, uh, I'll have this set up to cut through the stairs because that's usually the more interesting part of my building. So I ended up with these two planes this time. Uh, and I did, like I said, I did that on purpose. This needs to be, yeah, good. It's on that layer. Uh, let me switch back into the perspective view. There they are. There's my big planes. I'll turn off the second one, the on-axis one, and we'll work with this first one. So now that I have this giant plane, now it's time to start using the section tools command. So I'm going to go up to the section tools menu, and I'm going to go to create. The key command for this is stcreate, if you want to type it in instead. stcreate, and it's going to ask select objects to section. I'm going to type all and hit enter. So I'm selecting everything. However, I don't want to select, so I'm going to hold down the control key, that big plane. So I've done everything except the big plane. When I'm done, I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And then we're going to look here on my options. Press Enter to accept options, or I've got a bunch of separate little options here. Direction, do I want it to be in the x-axis? In this case, yes. There is a way of customizing it, and I'll show you that. There's a little trick to it, but I'll show you that on the next one. That's why I wanted to do it both ways. Um, and then we come down here. Then the only thing that's, that's uh, really important that we're going to is this solid mode. So I'm going to set the solid mode to surfaces because it's going to fill in what it cuts through, or it's going to try to fill in what it cuts through. It doesn't always work, but uh, it's a place to start. So I'm going to change solid mode to surfaces, and all the rest is just fine. So I'll go ahead and press Enter to accept my options. There it is. Then it says to place the section. Press Enter when done. And so if I look at my drawing, I've got this giant kind of double-sided arrow looking thing. It's a section line. The arrows are which direction I'm going to be looking. So in this case, I know I want to be looking the direction that it is currently facing. If I don't like the arrows, I can type F for flip, and the arrows will go the opposite direction. So I'm going to go to F again, and I'm going to be going that direction. And I'm going to snap right to the middle of this giant plane, right there. And when I'm done, you'll see this little ST00 will show up. And I could cut several more sections. If I wanted to cut a bunch of sections, I can do it all at once. But for our purposes, we're just doing this, this one section. And I'll go ahead and press Enter when I'm done. And it then creates the section. And so you'll see that it creates a new layer called ST00 that is locked. That's fine. We'll get to that layer in just a second. I can also uh, turn off my um, section plane at this point and make that go away. And you can see that there's a line that runs along where that section happened. There's even a line, as I zoom in on my building, of where I cut through the building. I'd like to be able to see what this section looks like, though. So to see what the section looks like, I'm going to go up to Section Tools, and I'm going to say uh, Section Tools View Sections. There it is, View. Or ST View will get you there. It's going to ask me to select the sections. It's always easiest, I think, to click on the List button, which will show you the list so you don't have to type in ST00 or know what the number is. I'll go ahead and say OK. And then it says Select Viewport to enable ST00. This is where I want to type in the name of the viewport that I want this to show up in. So I want it to show up in Perspective 05. This is also why I told you not to put spaces in your viewport names, because when you go to type this in, you're not going to want spaces. So I'll type Perspective 05, and I'll press Enter. And it will then clip everything on this side of the drawing. So as I zoom in here, like this, let me select my uh, block instance. There it is. Let me zoom select it on it. And we can see that essentially it cut a section right through my drawing such that I can see into it. The advantage of this section tools is that you can get it back by typing ST clear all views or going up to the section tools and choosing to clear views right there. So it's a temporary sectional state. This is also the point at which you'll want to fill in 
uh, anything that didn't fill in. So in my case, it didn't fill in correctly. Uh, so I would, I like to do it on this ST00 layer. I would come in here uh, with the surfaces tool and actually fill in the pieces of the section like that. Um, same thing, I'd go there. Oh, let me turn on perpendicular. And I'd come down to there. And you see I'm just filling in the part that I've cut through. I'm not going to fill it all in just yet, because I'm going to show you the other, the on-axis one. That was a little bit different. Uh, hopefully, your building is already on the XY axis, which makes life a little bit easier. Uh, in my case, it's not, but it's also good because I'm going to show you how to deal with it if it's not on axis. So I'm going to go back to Section Tools, and I'm going to go to Clear All Views. And there we go. I get it back. So again, it's a temporary state. Uh, and so I'm going to create another section, only this time I'm going to use my Plane 2 as my section. There's my Plane 2. So in order for this to work, Section Tools needs to know what, and it looks like I'm missing part of my surfaces here. Hold on a second. There it is. I was missing part of my, uh, my surface there. Um, Section Tools needs to know what the angle of this would be. So I'm going to go in and draw a line right at the top of my surface here, there to there. It's just a regular line. And then I'm going to move this line to the origin. So I'm going to type move. I'll pick one end and 0, 0, 0. Unfortunately, you have to do that because um, it, the section tools needs to go from the origin at 0, 0, 0 to wherever the rotation of the line is. It's just how section tools works. So I have this line as a guide, uh, and I'm going to set it up from here. So I'll go back into section tools, create or type st create, select objects to section, it's going to be all, except for that surface. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now, as I come in here to, to accept my options, the first one is direction. It's not going to be the x-axis or the y-axis, it's going to be a pick. And I'm going to go ahead and click on pick. From point, you see that 0 is already the starting point. So I'll, so from point, 0, 0, 0. Two point, and that's where I'm going to use my line, that line that I just created. That gives it its correct direction. If you don't put the line in and you don't start from 0, 0, 0, it won't get the angle right. And you'll pull your hair out trying to fix it. It's just a quirk in the way that the section tools works. So I already have that set. My solids mode is set to surfaces. All the rest of the options are fine. I'll hit Enter. And then it says to place the section. So there is my section. And I do want it going in this direction, so the arrows are in the correct direction. So I'll snap right to the top of that surface, right there. It creates ST01. So again, we can have multiple sections without a problem. Uh, I'm done. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And it'll create that section for me. So I can then turn off my section plane 2. And I can type ST view sections. And this time, I'm going to pick ST01. And I want to uh, enable it in a perspective 0, 05. Perspective 0, 05. And there it is. So let me select, um, oops, no. I need to zoom in on this. There it is. Zoom selected. And there's the part of my building that's left over. And you can see where it's been cut through. It's cut through the stairs. This is a good place to cut the section. So now I do need to fill in the walls. And I'm going to actually do it for this one. I'm going to uh, move my mouse down to ST01. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill in using the surfaces. And actually, I can use a vertical surface there. I'm going to fill in all the segments of the wall. Let me turn off center. I don't need that. Being really terrible at snapping, of course. Uh, 
How nice. Oh, come on. There we go. So for whatever reason, I'm just struggling to get my snaps to work. But essentially what I would do is I would go through and I would fill in all of these wall segments. And for whatever reason, it's not doing a, a particularly good job. Um, sometimes you can save yourself a little bit of trouble uh, where I could actually turn off um, other content. I'll leave the blocks layer on. We'll turn off the site. Turn off my lights. And then I will try once again to fill these in. Um, and you can even sometimes get away with turning off the actual block itself because the section tools should give you the outline of what you've cut through. So you can see how it's giving me the outline of what it's cut through. So with all of that off, I should be able to fill this in. Um, but again, my snaps are just not working for me right now. It's too weird. OK, well, you don't need me uh, to keep solving that. You guys understand what I'm talking about, where I can fill these in. And, but this is the kind of thing that's just going to bug me. <laughs> anyway, um, so I apologize for that. But um, let me try one more time. Nope, it's really not going to snap for me. But you would fill all of that in, because you want it to end up being solid when you do the render. Um, so you'd want that, that part to fill in. OK, so now that I have that, that that cut made, I'm going to turn back on my, my layers here. All right. And the good news is that I have the cuts made. The bad news is that this, when I go to render it, isn't going to actually render uh, as if the section is there. And it's really struggling to display correctly. There it is. Uh, so while I can set up my view to be ready to do this rendering, if I went and did the actual rendering in V-Ray, it would show the whole building, uh, because V-Ray doesn't recognize the section tools. So this is where that plane comes in. So I need to spend a little bit more time working with it. So I'm going to go to ST clear all views. Oops, let me ST clear all views. There it is. Perfect. So I get my whole building back. I'll turn back on my section plane. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and explode all of my blocks. So I'm going to type SEL block instance. And that selects all my blocks. I'm going to type explode. And it's going to explode. And you can see that it's totally changing all of my layers. It's making a big mess of my drawing. Uh, and that's the nature of it. So when I'm done, I'll hit Escape. And then SEL block instance again to get the rest of the blocks. So there's furniture. There's windows. Um, and I'm going to explode. When it's done, I'll hit Escape again. And then SEL block instance. And I'll explode, escape, SEL block instance. And then I'll explode. And eventually, you'll get to where there are no SEL block instance. Right? No objects added to selection. Everything's been exploded. So now that I have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to split my building and all the ground with this giant plane. So I'm going to type split, select objects to split all except for the big giant plane. I'll hold down Control and deselect that. And I'll hit Enter. Select cutting objects. It's going to be this big plane as my cutting object. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And this is going to take a little bit of time, because it's going to go through and try to split all of my objects. If you notice the command line, there will be some things where it pops up split failed. Those split fails are when an object isn't completely being intersected by that, um, because I have objects that won't intersect. So it's OK that it flashes up some split fails. You just have to bear with it while it finishes uh, splitting everything. So while it's splitting, uh, I'm going to go to the course website.
And under resources, if we go to the V-Ray materials library and then go to the special materials, uh, we might just have to see all the uh, materials. There are specialty materials. We're going to be using a material called see-through right here. And what see-through material, and I'm going to explain this in just a second, what it is is kind of a trick. Uh, V-Ray allows us to create a material that couldn't exist in real life. What this material is, is it's transparent to the eye, so we can see through it, but it's opaque to light. So it still casts shadows as if it's a real material. So um, you can actually, you can log this, you can, you can log in and download it, uh, but there's also a tutorial that walks you through, great, the link isn't there. Uh, let me go into, it should be under V-Ray, see through 8.22, and this will walk you through how to just create it from scratch. Um, either way, you can download it or create it. I'm going to be using that material in my Rhino file to identify what is on one side versus the other side. Okay, so I'm going to get right in the middle of this and I'm going to zoom in toward my building, right about like that. And I'm going to select everything that is on this side of my section. So I'll get up nice and close to it. I don't want things that are on the other side, so I don't want this, I don't want that. I don't want that, etc. I should be able to select essentially everything that's on that that outside side of my section. Do you guys see how I selected that? Okay. So, with that part selected, I'm going to go through my list and I'm going to turn off any layers that have glass on them. So I'll come down here, and this is where your layer organization can really help. Uh, I'm, but I'm going to turn off. There's window glass. I'll turn that off. Uh, let's see here. Window glass. There's another one. There's glass railing. All right, and I think I got it all. Uh, and what that is, is it's deselecting all the pieces that are, that are truly transparent glass. With all of those deselected, I'm going to take and apply that see-through material. So I'll go to my materials library, and I'm going to load. I'll right-click on see materials and say load material. I'm going to go into my flash drive, into my resources folder, into V-Ray, V-Ray materials, and under special materials, there's see-through. If you downloaded the resource package, it should be in there for you. I'm going to go ahead and load see-through. There it is. And if I preview it, lo and behold, there shouldn't be anything there. That's on purpose. I'll right click and say apply material to selection. So I'm going to override all the current materials that are on it and apply that see-through material to it. When I'm done with that, I can close the material editor and I can deselect everything. Oops, there we go. And with everything deselected, I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn on each of the, the things that I turned off. So there's the glass railing. I'm going to right click and say select objects so I can see what it is that I turned off. I'm going to come down here to the window glass and I'll right click and say select objects. Oops, sorry. Select objects, there we go. Um, and my glass railing, select objects. And there's one more right here. I'll right click and say select objects. And there we go. That should all be all of the glass that was in my building. At this point, I'm going to change my view around like this. And I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to deselect all the glass that's on this side. So again, I'm only selecting the glass that's on the outside of the section cut. So there it all is. If I left this as glass, I'd get floating panes of glass when I went to do the render, and I don't want that. So I'm going to create one more new material. I'll go to my V-Ray material editor, and this time it's going to be truly just the transparent material. I'll go to create material uh, standard. Uh, let me call it transparent. I'll say OK. And all I'm going to do is change the transparency of this material to white. 
So under diffuse transparency, it should be set to white, which makes it completely transparent. I will then right click on the transparent material and say apply material to selection, which were all those pieces of glass that were on the, the cut side of my section cut. So they're there. At this point, all I'm going to need to do is turn off my, um, my section plane 2. There it is. And I'm ready to perform a rendering. I don't actually have to go into section tools and view it. I could if I wanted to, to get this set up. I can actually just render it, uh, and it will show up because half the building is already that see-through material. It's ready to, to, to have the rendering performed. So once I get the view set up the way that I want it, I can go ahead and perform the rendering. Now it doesn't matter whether I'm doing a night rendering or a day rendering. In either case, in the case of the night rendering, the lights that are on the, this side of being cut off will still shine. The cones will still shine. Everything will still work as normal. Just half my building we won't be able to see. So once I get this set up, I can go into my V-Ray options. And I believe this is currently set for a night rendering. So the first one that I'll do is a night rendering. I'll subsequently do a day rendering uh, so that you guys can see it. I'll go in. Uh, and I'm going to go to my output. I'm going to make sure that this is small first just to do a test. So we'll do it at 100. And then I'll go ahead and start a render. So I know that this isn't in its highest quality, but you can see that it basically cut open that part of the room and that all the lights are still shining the way that they should. Uh, and that's the point. I need a few more lights on this side of the room to really see it. Uh, to make that a little bit easier to see, let me go ahead and I'll go into my V-Ray options and I'm going to load the daytime render. So let me go ahead and go into load and I'll go to my flash drive and we'll go into my folder here and we're going to switch over to the day. Here's the daytime settings. Perfect, those are reloaded. So make sure that this is set at 100 so that it's nice and small. The only thing left that I have to do is I have to make sure that I turn back on the sun so that the sun is on, and then we'll go ahead and do a render of that. And again, it's, it's designed to be small on purpose as we test out this render. So this could certainly use some collage work, but you can see that I was able to cut that part of the building. But at the same time, the sun is being, it's casting a shadow as if the whole building is there. And no sun is leaking into my building other than what's coming through the windows. And that's a really important distinction. If you were to do this in SketchUp, as soon as you open that side of the building, the sun would come right in that side of the building. And so in this case, it is accurate to the, uh, the sun conditions and the lighting conditions that you've set up. Um, this obviously, my background is not the most attractive background in the world here. Um, it would need some Photoshop work to really, to really look good. It would also help if I filled in all of where this building has been cut through. Likewise, if I filled in down below here. I will, I will try to get that figured out and I'll add some more lights and maybe do another night render at a higher resolution so you can actually see this um, show up. So the purpose today is to understand the concept of sections. We are going to use this concept for the line drawings that we'll do a week from today. So you'll have to cut the section, but then we'll create a line drawing from the section rather than just a sectional perspective like this would be. Um, this is not a requirement. The section is not a requirement for your final. It's only the interior day, night, exterior day, night, and your line drawing. One line drawing, that's it. However, if you want to include a section, I think that would be great because learning how to do a section from your Rhino model is, is really important. So once again, make sure you do a save as before you create the section because you're going to end up destroying your model. Um, and that's, that's to be expected. Um, and then I'll do a, a higher quality rendering and, and show you guys the end result afterwards. So uh, try to do a section today. Obviously try to finish up your model. Recognize, of course, that we're down to it. This is 
um, one of three lectures left that I have to give. Well, actually, now that this lecture is over, uh, I only have two more left to give. So we don't have a lot of time left. So it's time to really start wrapping things up, time to get these renderings out, spend your time wisely. If you don't end up doing a section today, that's OK. But do make sure that you turn in something for today's exercise, whatever you worked on uh, for the remainder of the class time. All right? Any questions about sections right now? No, it'll come back. We'll do the whole thing again. I'll do this whole process again when I do the line drawings, and you'll, you'll see it um, again. <laughs>